So let's see how the chart of accounts is set up. Normally we think of the chart of accounts being sorted by the type over here, the type of account. Now, when you think about the account type, you're usually just thinking first on its most basic level, the balance sheet on top of the income statement. So this is the detail type. I'm should be over here on the type. So notice it's sorted by type. So balance sheet on top of the income statement. So if I go back, so if we go on over to our balance sheet and I was to collapse the balance sheet down to its bare bones, down to its essentials, I'm looking assets, liabilities, and equity. We in essence have the accounting equation. So that's how you first want to think of the chart of accounts in essence. You have assets, liabilities, equity on top of in essence, income and expenses. If I jump on over to the income statement and break this down to its bare bones, You've got income and then you've got a couple categories cost of goods sold but basically expenses income and expenses so assets liabilities income and expenses if i go to the chart of accounts you're basically thinking we're sorting by account type balance sheet on top of income statement assets liabilities uh equity which is the balance sheet and then income and expenses we'll talk more about how the accounting equation fits with the income statement and so on later but then within those categories you've got these kind of subcategories and these are interesting to note in terms of what they're going to do to the financial statements how are they going to be reported on them and why we have some of the subcategories and how they might differ to what you might see in financial reporting so let's just get a feel for that the first one is the bank accounts so let's i'm going to open these up and just give a quick reference we'll talk more about the balance sheet later but notice you've got assets, which isn't an account type, but you still have the triangle because the triangle represents the full account category of assets for financial statement reporting. You've got current assets, also has a triangle, but isn't an account type over here. You have other current assets, but not just current assets because for financial reporting, we have current assets. But then you've got bank accounts. Now, bank accounts is not what you would see normally on financial reporting. You would see cash and cash equivalents typically. But here we want to call them bank accounts to indicate the fact that these are going to be accounts that are connected to possibly bank feeds. They have a special usage and therefore they have a different account type. This triangle right here is driven by the account type. So you can see we have the account type and then these two are, are under that account type. So that's a little different than financial reporting purposes. Accounts receivable also has a triangle because it's a different account type. The reason it's different than just current assets is because it has a special need of a subledger relating to breaking out the receivables by customer. So it's a little funny to have a sub account and the account underneath it, but it's driven by the fact that we have an accounts receivable account type in and of itself. Everything else that doesn't fit in that uh, special category or that doesn't have a special category for other current assets is in other current assets, which is our next account type, as we can see here. And then we've got the fixed assets, which are gonna be the property, plants, and equipment. You might hear them called depreciable assets, uh, buildings, equipment, and so on. And the related depreciation that has its own category there. And then we've got our liabilities under the liabilities that's an overarching category, a financial statement category. That's why it has a triangle. Then we've got current liabilities, which is a financial statement category, but it's not an actual uh, category on the chart of accounts. We have other current uh, liabilities, but not just current liabilities because they want to make these sub accounts. Once again, accounts payable, similar to accounts receivable, has a special need to track the payables by who we owe, by vendor, and therefore it has its own account type. That's where the triangle is coming from. Accounts payable. And then we've got the credit cards. They have their own special account type because they might be connected to the bank feeds. And that's why you have a triangle here for the credit cards. And then you've got the other current liabilities, which is every other other current liability that doesn't have some special need. That triangle is also represented by the account type. Then you've got the long-term liabilities, another category, that triangle represented by the account type. And then you've got the equity accounts. We'll talk more about them in the future, but you can see that's representing another account type down here on the equity. And then you go to the income statement where you have income. And so that's another account type, income accounts. Then you have these other triangles in here 
Notice that's not because it's a financial account category in terms of a general account category or an account type, but because we made sub accounts, which we'll talk about shortly later. Then you've got the cost to get sold. That triangle is created by another account type, as we can see here, cost to get sold. Then you've got your expenses, which is usually your largest category. You've got a bunch of other subcategories under the expenses, which are not account types in and of themselves or financial categories, but rather sub account categories. And then way down here, you've got other expenses, which is another account type. That's where that triangle comes from. And you can see the sorting down below. 